Hi, welcome to this video about statistics with Archiwar and the package architeaching. In this video, we are going to see how to use Archiwar and architeaching in order to compute confidence intervals. Well, as usually, first open your booklet of practices and go to chapter uh, 9, confidence intervals for one population. Okay, let's go to exercise one. In exercise one, eh, we have a sample and we're measuring the active ingredient concentration of a random sample of 10 drugs containers drawn from a batch. Okay, the first part is to create data set. We are not going to create the data set. We are going to load it from the architeaching package. And remember that first, you have to go to settings, manage our packages and plugins and here look for the architeaching package that is here and load okay after this go to the workspace tab and here in other environments you will see the architeaching package unfold it and look for the uh, data set principio activo this one then copy to global M. Remember that you have to make a copy of the data set that you want to use in your workspace, my workspace. And now you can double click in order to open this data set. As you will see, it contains only one variable, concentration. And uh -huh, the sample size is only 10. Okay. Well, now let's go to part B. It has compute the confidence interval for the mean of the active ingredient concentration with a 95% confidence level, or what is the same as significance level alpha 0.05. Well, in this case, what I want is to estimate uh, the mean for the whole population, and the whole population is all the containers in the batch, and we want to estimate the mean from the sample, and for that reason, we need a confidence interval. In order to get a confidence interval, in Archivore, you have to go to the menu Teaching, Parametric Test, Means, and T-Test for the mean of one population, because I want to estimate the mean of one population. So let's go to Teaching, Parametric Test, Means, because I want to estimate a mean, and here you have different options, but you have to select T-Test for the mean of one population, because I want to estimate the mean of just one population. Click here. In the dialog, you only have to select the variable that you want in order to compute the confidence interval, that is concentration. Then go to Test Auction tab, and here you will have the confidence level that by default is 0 0.95. So that's it. Submit. And here you get a table with the confidence interval that appears yeah, in the last column of this table, yeah? confidence interval for the mean. Okay, and here you have the lower limit of the interval from 16.68 and the upper limit up to 19.23. So I can say that the mean of the whole population of the whole batch is going to fall between 16.68 and 19.23 with a 95% of confidence. Here you have the confidence for this interval. Oh, let's go to part C. In part C, it asks for the confidence interval for the mean again, but now with a 99% of confidence. So all you have to do is run again. And here, in test options tab, just change the confidence level, and increasing the confidence level up to 0 0.99. Then submit, and here you have the confidence interval with a 99% of confidence. And it's going to be from 16.12 up to 19.79. In part D, it, has, it says that if we define the precision of the interval as the inverse of its width, how changes the precision of the interval when we increase the confidence level? Well, we can compare these two intervals, the interval with a 95% of confidence with the interval with a 99% of confidence. If you have a look to the interval and compute the width and remember that the width of the interval, the amplitude of this, the difference between the upper and the lower limits, it's easy to see that the confidence interval for the 
is wider. So that means it's less accurate than the interval for the 95%. So that means that when you are increasing the confidence level, the accuracy of the interval is going to decrease because uh, the interval becomes wider. This can be explained just uh, with common sense because if you have an interval and you want to be more sure, more confident that uh, the interval contains the parameter that you want to estimate, obviously you have to make the interval wider. Okay, let's go to part E. It asks for what's the sample size required to get an estimate of the mean of the active ingredient concentration with an error no greater than plus minus 0 0.5 milligrams cubic millimeter and a confidence level 95%. Okay, the sample size that you have to select uh, for a study depends on several factors. Um, basically, are the variability of data in the population and the accuracy for your estimation and the confidence level for your estimation. Okay, here you can control these two. Eh? You can control the confidence level for your estimation and the accuracy, but you don't control at all the variability of the data, eh? the variability of the variable in the population. So we need to estimate the variability of data that is the standard deviation of the whole population. For that, we are going to go to teaching, descriptive statistics and statistics. And here, select the variable concentration and go to basic statistics. And here, instead of selecting standard deviation, we are going to use as an estimator of the standard deviation of the population, the corrected standard deviation of the sample. The reason is that the standard deviation of the sample always underestimate the standard deviation of the population, so it's not a good estimator. And we have to correct a little bit eh, these statistics in order to get an unbiased uh, statistics, an unbiased estimator. Uh, and this is the corrected standard deviation. Just submit, and here you get the corrected standard deviation. And we're going to use this value as an estimator of the standard deviation of the population. So we are going to copy this value, and then in order to compute the sample size, you have to go to teaching parametric test means and sample size to estimate one mean. So let's go to teaching parametric test means and sample size to estimate one mean. Here in this dialog, first you need to enter the estimation for the standard deviation of the population, that is the value that we have computed previously. So here I can paste this value. And then the confidence level that you want for your estimation, eh, in this case is 95%. And also, finally, eh, the accuracy or the error that you want for your estimation, that in this case is 0 0.5. And that's all. You can submit and you get the sample size that you need. So that means that if you want to estimate the mean of the concentration with a an error no greater than plus minus 0 0.5 milligrams and a confidence level 95%, you have to pick approximately 52 containers in this sample. This is very interesting because eh, always before starting a study, you have to design the random experiment. And one of the first thing you need to know is how, how many individuals should you pick in your study. And now we can answer that question eh, back because it depends on uh, what parameters do you want to estimate and what's the accuracy and the confidence level that you want for your estimations. The last question is, if the active ingredient concentration must be at least 16 milligrams milli cubic millimeter in order to be effective, can we validate the batch? Well, using the confidence interval with a 95% of confidence, that is the default, this is one, as the confidence interval goes from 16.68 up to 19.23, the whole interval is above 16. So I can say that the mean that is supposed is going to fall into the interval is going to be above 16. Therefore, we can say that this drug is going to be effective. This with a confidence of 95%. Eh? Remember that we are not 100% sure. There is always a margin of error for our decisions. 
and in this case the margin of error is you know, only 5%. Okay? If you want to be more sure, you can increase the confidence level. If you have a look to the confidence interval with an 89% of confidence, you will see that uh, this interval again is above a uh, 16. So that means that even using the confidence interval with an 89% of confidence, we can validate the batch because the whole interval is above 16. In this case, the risk of taking the wrong decision uh, is very small, it's just 1%. So I can say almost for sure that this drug is going to be effective. Okay, now let's go to exercise 2. In this exercise, we, ha we have a sample uh, from milks that comes from two farms, X and Y. And the purpose of this study is to compare the fat content of these two milks. Okay, well, first of all, we are going to create a data set. Usually, we are going to load this data set from the architecture package. And the name for this data set is milk. Here you have. We are going to make a copy, copy to global amp. And now you can open this data set. And as you can see, it contains two variables, fat, the fat content that is numeric, and also the farm. You know, the farm that is a factor, it's a qualitative variable that contains two values, x and y. The farm where the milk comes from. Well, first it asks for the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval for the mean of the fat, regardless the farm. So this is the same that we did in the previous exercise. Just go to teaching, parametric test, means, and select t-test for the mean of one population. Uh, here, select the variable fat. And finally, in test auction, select the confidence level that you want. That is, by default, 95%. Submit. And here you have, here you get the confidence interval that is going to be from 0.3 up to 0 0.32 so that is the mean for the fat content of the mill is going to be between these two values with a 95 percent of confidence well this is not very interesting if your purpose is to compare eh, the two milk if you want to compare the two milks the milks that comes from x with the milk that comes from y you need to split the sample in two groups and that's part c it asks for the 95 percent confidence interval for the mean of fat for every farm. So in order to compute in the two confidence intervals, one for x, one for y, we're going to run again. The variable is the same fat, but now in order to split the sample in groups and compute different intervals for each group, you have to check this box, text by groups, and here select as grouping variable, the variable farm, the variable that you want to use in order to split the sample. So this way we're going to split the sample in milk from X and milk from Y and we're going to compute two different intervals, one for X, one for Y. Then submit and as you can see you get two different uh, intervals. The first one is for farm X, the second one is for farm Y. And now we're going to compare these two intervals because the first one is from 0 0.317 up to 0 0.334 and the second one is from 0 0.299 up to 0 0.316 approximately. So in order to interpret these intervals, this is part E that asks for if there is a significant difference between the milk fat content, the means of the farms. Well, if the mean for the farm X falls between 0 0.317 and 0 0.334 and the mean for farm y falls between 0 0.299 and 0 0.316, I can say that these two means could not be equal because these two intervals doesn't overlap at all. There is no common values between these two intervals. So we can conclude that there is a significant difference between the two milks with a 95% of confidence. And since the interval for x has greater values, I can say that the mean of farm X is greater than the mean of farm Y. That is, milk from farm X contains more fat. Let's move on to SSI 3. It says uh, in a survey 
performed by our university about the use of the library, a random sample of 34 students has been asked whether they go to the library at least once a week. So in this case, we are interested in estimating the percentage of students that use the library. Because this variable is not a quantitative variable, it's a qualitative variable, so it makes no sense to estimate the mean like in the previous exercises. In this case, we are going to estimate the proportion or the percentage of students that go to the library. Well, first we are going to load this data set that I think is library, the name. Yes, here it is. And then right click, copy to global M in order to make a copy in our workspace. Then double click. You will see that it contains two variables, the answer and the gender. But for this exercise, we are not going to use the gender. So we are going to use only the answer that is a qualitative variable, is a factor. It contains two categories, no and yes. Part B asks for the confidence interval for the proportion of students that use the library at least once a week with a significance level 0.01. Okay, so that means that the confidence level is 0.99. Well, in order to compute a confidence interval for a proportion, you have to go to teaching, parametric tests, proportions, and tests for one proportion. Now, let's go to teaching menu, parametric tests. Now, instead of means, we are going to select proportions because the variable is qualitative. And here, select test for one proportion because we have only one population. In this dialog, first select the variable that you want to estimate the proportion for. That in this case is the answer. It contains two values, two categories, and you have to select for which value do you want the proportion. In this case, I want to estimate the proportion of students that go to the library, so we are going to select C, yes. And then go to test options, and here select the confidence level that is 0 0.99. Then submit, and here we get the confidence interval for the proportion of students that go to the library regularly. So the proportion of students that go to the library is going to be between 0 0.26 up to 0 0.68 or if you prefer from 26.17 up to 68.96%. Well, as you can see, the width for this interval uh, is, is quite big. So this interval is not accurate at all, and that's a trouble with proportions because usually in order to get a, uh, an interval, an accurate interval for estimating a proportion, you need a big sample size usually. And that's the, the question C, no? So question D is about the sample size required to get an estimate of the proportion of a student that use the library with an error not greater than plus minus 1%, so it's a quite accurate interval, and a confidence level 95%. The sample size depends on several things, several factors. One is the confidence level, that is 95% in this case. Another one is the accuracy for your interval, that is plus minus 1%, and also it depends on the variability of data. And for that, uh, we need to estimate what's the proportion of uh, students that go to the library. And this estimated proportion appears here in this table, in the previous table. So we are going to copy this eh, estimated proportion because we need it in order to compute the sample size. Now we can go to this uh, menu, teaching, parametric test, proportions, sample size to estimate one proportion. Teaching, parametric test, proportions, and sample size to estimate one proportion. Here, the proportion of the po in the population is the estimation of the proportion, obviously, because we don't know the, the true proportion. Here we have to paste the estimation, that is this value. And then the confidence level, that is 0 0.95 in this case. And finally, the error, that is going to be 1%, as a proportion is 0 0.01. Then submit, and here you get the sample size that you need. As you can see, it's quite a big sample. Uh, you need approximately 9,570 students uh, need to be asked uh, in order to estimate the, the true um, 
percentage or proportion of students that go to the library with an error no greater than 1% and a confidence level 95%. Okay, finally, in exercise four, it says the Ministry of Health wants to compute a confidence interval for the proportion of people over 60 with respiratory problems that have been vaccinated. For that, we have a sample of 200 persons over 65 with respiratory problems, and we know that 154 of these were vaccinated. So first, compute the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of people over 65 with respiratory problems vaccinated. Well, in this case, we are not going to create a dataset because in order to compute the confidence interval for the proportion, is enough the frequency of the sample. And here we have the frequency of the sample, 154. Okay, so we don't need to create a dataset. So we are going to go directly to this menu teaching is a previous menu, parametric test, proportions, and test for one proportion, because we have only one population. And here, instead of using a variable, because we, have, we haven't defined a, a data set or a variable, we're going to mark this, manual entry of frequencies. And here, all you have to do is enter the sample frequency, in this case is 154, and the sample size, that is 200. And then in test auctions, the confidence level that you want, that is 95% in this case, and then submit. So this way, even if you don't have a data set, eh, you can compute the confidence interval for the proportion. That is going to be eh, the percentage or the proportion of people vaccinated is going to be between 0 0.704 up to 0 0.825 with an 85% of confidence. And finally, the last question is if the Ministry of Health goal is to achieve at least 70% of people over 50 with respiratory problems vaccinated, can we say that the Ministry of Health has achieved the goal? Well, according to the interval, yeah, in order to say that the proportion of people vaccinated is at least 70%, the whole interval must be above 70. And that's the case because if you have a look to the interval, the, the lower limit is 0 0.704. So that is above 0 0.7. So that is the whole interval is above 0 0.7. So we can affirm that the percentage of people vaccinated is above 70% with a 95% of confidence. Well, and that's all for this practice. As always, I propose you to try the these exercises and thank you for watching this video. Bye!